Hi my loves. So, good morning. Welcome back to Vlogmas. I am just about to put my contact lenses in. What do you think of my haircut? I was unsure about the length initially because I had wanted to keep a bit more length. But what he did was he left the top layer like normal and then went in and thinned some of the um, un layers underneath the hair underneath and I actually think that it has worked and that it's just not so bulky and heavy at the ends. Sorry for this horrible yellow light by the way. The last, this is my makeup mirror light. It's just so yellow and there's not much I can do about it. I do try when I'm editing to sort of tone down the yellow a little bit but I'm not always successful. Anyway my loves thought I'd do a really quick get ready with me today because a few of you said that you wanted a little bit more makeup, a little bit more of that. Recently I have been unable to bring my chair around so I have to do my makeup standing up and I thought I couldn't film but actually this is probably an even more convenient filming spot. I put you on my shoe shelves so I actually think it works better. Um, but anyway we're going to use the Authored Tinted Moisturiser. So I think way back when Vlogmas began I was like I'll talk to you about this when I next use it and then obviously didn't really have the opportunity to show you me using it for a little while. Um, but yeah, I really like this. It's quite a like runny formula. It kind of reminds me, I was chatting to someone about it on Instagram and they were like, oh my favourite face product is MAC Face and Body. And I would say that the texture is quite similar. Yeah, when I first tried this I was a little bit unsure because it's actually quite matte compared, not matte, but it definitely has a kind of mattifying effect compared to other tinted moisturisers because I feel like tinted moisturisers particularly um, are often very glowy but actually it's really good for someone of my skin type who does get oily. Um, the coverage is good light to medium buildable. Um, as you can see I am putting on a couple layers of it today. So yeah I would say the coverage is better than other tinted moisturizers I've tried as well like it's a bit more significant. Um, and the staying power is also better than other tinted moisturizers. So in conclusion I really like it and uh, it is a great everyday one when you just want to throw on a face. Today we're throwing on a face. Um, but yeah the other reason I don't really film a lot of makeup in my vlogs is because, well it's a couple reasons I suppose, um, one being I hate this yellow light, um, just using some concealer, hang on I need a mirror, and the other reason I think is prob probably because it's kind of like my chill time, like my getting ready time before the day really goes absolutely out of control. Off to the house first thing today, so excited to see it and to chat to you about it. When was the last time I was there? I can't remember with you. I can't remember. I'm just trying to decide what bronzer I want to wear today. We're gonna go with the Endless Summer Bronzer by Bare Minerals and this one is in Photan. They do a couple of shades. I haven't used this one for ages but actually just reminded how nice it is. And then on top I'm just gonna use a little bit of the Glossier Cloud Paint. This is, I know it looks gross has travelled with me far and wide. I actually need to get a new one. Um, paint in puff. Last few bits, I'm gonna take the Hourglass Arch Micro Sculpting Pencil and just run a bit of colour through my brows. And we've got a wave of hunger, oh my goodness, because we're going to the house first thing. I get a coffee first thing. I get one on the way. I'll show you my outfit because the final free people um, item arrived and I'm wearing it today. <laughs> it will come as no surprise to any of you. Some of you may even, those of you who are eagle eyed may even sort of know what I'm about to show you. It's a little bit of the authored mascara. Really like this stuff. Defines, adds volume, nice and black. Nice staying power all day. Holds a curl. I like the wand. Just an all round good mascara. I feel like this mascara is very quick to use. Like it's very, you get your in, you got instant lash and you don't have to spend lots of time messing around with it, if you know what I mean. Then we're going to use the Authored Brow Gel. I like this stuff too. 
colour payoff is good and it's nice and sort of waxy. I'm just going to run it mostly through the ends of my brows. I'd say I paid a lot of attention to how well this lasts throughout the day though. Um, I find if I'm wearing tinted moisturiser and not like a proper full face, I just don't love lip colour on me. I think I have to be... I have to be wearing like a proper full face to like lipstick on me. I don't know why that is, I think it just picks up the pink in my skin. Um, so I'm just going to use the Authored Lip Balm because I have it here. It's a little, it's one of those kind of thin, thinner, slightly more greasy lip balms. I wonder if Tanya did that so that you could use it in a sort of multi-purpose fashion. Um, like maybe on your eyes or on the tops of your cheekbones as well. Um, but in terms of lip balm, it's not my favourite kind of lip balm. Anyway, my loves, that is my very quick makeup. Um, yes, I'm going to go show you my outfit now. So, this is the final piece that I bought from Free People. And this one, I am going to keep. It is the cream version of the black shirt that I wear all the time. I think it's called the One Scout Jacket, I think. But it is more of a shirt. Um, obviously, you could wear it as a shack it or whatever <laughs> in warmer weather. This one definitely is the same size, it's small, but it definitely is a little bit shorter and a little bit smaller. So um don't know what that's about. I do really like it. I think it's nice for now, but I also think it'll be one of those things that's nice to chuck on over a bikini or whatever when on on holiday. Just a versatile piece. Um, I looked at so many of the different colourways in this um, shirt and I wanted them all. <laughs> But I figured actually the cream would be the most practical. But yeah, this is the rest of my outfit. I'm wearing these Maison Margiela jeans, which I got from Farfetch. Um, God, when was that? A few months ago now. I love them, although I can already sort of feel the breeze in the little um, <laughs> cut, cut out things. But yes, and then I'm wearing these super old Doc Martens. I don't think they make these exact ones anymore, but they do make similar ones, um, which I'll link up down below. Just a nice chilled outfit today, and then I've, I am denied over coats for a while, but I went with the dolman in the end because I've obviously got black boots on, so I kind of wanted a black coat. Um, and what I like about the dolman, it's quite cosy and comfy, but it's not a huge coat. Um, it's obviously short and we're going to be in and out of shops I think today. I actually don't think it's that cold. Um, anyway, we have um, messed around enough this morning. We need to get going. This is our dressing room. If I've got footage of how it was before, I'll insert it here, but the wall has come down from here, which um, is making the space look even bigger, which is good. I mean, it, obviously the space will look. So, oh, and the chimney stack's come out. Um, obviously there was a chimney stack here as well, so now the wall is flush. We're not getting rid of many chimney stacks, but in some rooms it does seem to make sense, particularly this one. Um, for a dressing room, just give us a bit of extra storage. Obviously the room will look smaller again once it's actually got wardrobes in, but it's looking quite nice and big, nice big space. So we are roofless, We've got windows. This one will be in the bathroom, this one will be in the bedroom. The bathroom's sort of gonna be in this space here. And this is our window, this will be our window over the stairwell. Follow this line up to the new loft so you kind of can see the opening now where you'll go up to the next floor. 
So I'm sorry, it is quite dark in here, but um, so this is the other chimney stack that we removed and I've talked about this before, but now they're actually gone and this is our kitchen. So yes, again, looks like a much bigger space with the chimney stack gone um, and a bit more usable. Okay, so this I did want to talk to you about because it is probably the biggest change that Zach and I have decided recently that I haven't, I definitely haven't told you about. I feel like every time I come here, I've completely forgotten what I've told you, not told you, but this I know that I haven't. <laughs> this is the front of the house and we've got a classic Victorian reception room, double reception room. Oh my God, my camera's gonna die, please do not do that to me. And so originally this was gonna be our front room, the pink room, and the yellow room was gonna be the library um, because it kind of has a cozy, vibes you sort of walk through into the library but we are having um, as you can see there was a weird conservatory at the end here which I've talked about before um, but all of this will now look into the kitchen and we're going to get rid of this um, because we don't need a door there and we're going to have a long low window um, this was debated for a long time what we would do um, to get a window into this room because as you can see even with this it's quite dark in here just because of the way the light comes into the house I don't know just a, this room sits at the heart of the house so it's quite dark so we wanted to bring a little bit of light in um, somehow so we decided in the end on the long low window because there's going to be a steel like somewhere around here which is keeping which is helping the extension stay up um, or whatever is above the extension. Um, of course, my battery has died on my camera, which is just classic. But anyway, um, so yes, there's two types of um, options we thought of for the bookshelves, like major options, and I'll put them on, well, one was to take it all the way up to the ceiling, and the second option was to make a sort of lower bookcase, which looks a bit more like furniture, and we can put stuff above it, and I'll put a picture on screen of what I mean. So, I think we ended up, in the end, deciding to go with the second option, which I think might be a bit controversial, I don't know. Um, but I think it will look cosier, older, um, so we went with the second option and that was really confusing us with um, this low window because it would essentially make, you know, the window would take up so much bookshelf space and there'd be no point in putting anything above it. Um, so we decided to switch the rooms. So now this room is gonna be a cozy, snug room. That's gonna be where our TV is. That's, you know, gonna be, um, just like a, a little family room and I think actually it will be nice for it to be in the middle of the house I think it'll be feel cozy it'll feel just nice and then this room will be the book room um, and it will have I guess a more formal feel um, I, d I doubt it'll be super formal but um, I actually think that it to totally works I think Zach suggested it and I was like hmm actually yes but anyway, we've just been discussing with our contractor what to do then about the doorways. The doorways is the next big thing because, yes, we've obviously got two at the moment. And to actually get the most use out of these rooms, we probably want to get rid of at least one. So originally, we were going to have this room as the family room, get rid of this doorway and have a super long sofa along here and then watch TV on the chimney breast, and we were gonna get rid of the um, fireplace in here and put a fireplace back in here. Um, it was sad, I wanted two fireplaces, but for the reasons of the TV being the correct height, I think it just didn't make sense. But anyway, now we switch the rooms around um, to have a doorway in here um, really um, encroaches on our sofa space. We've obviously got the window here, so we don't want to block too much of that off with a big corner sofa. But it means, you know, if we did keep the door in here, I would be able to have one big long bookshelf here and it would look amazing. But I think we've just decided for practicality that we will get rid of this doorway. 
um, that will have a longer sofa here. Um, yes, we won't be reinstating the fireplace. There'll be a TV on the chimney breast. And we're going to shift this doorway along and build it into the bookshelf. So it's kind of like a feature, I guess. Um, don't know what that will mean for sofa in here, but we'll have a think. So that is, I think, how we're going to configure these rooms. But... It has been a lot of talking, a lot of thinking. Um, the bookshelf's gonna go up to the picture rail. The picture rail in here is actually taller, but we'll bring it down to match the bookshelves, I think. Um, and then we've just been discussing finishes for the shelves as well. And I think, Zach and I kind of wanna do, it's a little bit unusual, but do a raw wood finish or something that you can see the grain and it looks like wood. Obviously it'll be stained. Um, but I'll put another picture on screen of something I found which I like um, which kind of give you an idea and then I think with greeny walls that's gonna look really really nice but yes and I think contractor just said that we could have adjustable shelving which takes a little bit of pressure off me to decide what heights I want the shelves and because you don't really know what you want I think until you've got books on shelves um but yeah so the so the books will so the doorway maybe will be about here books along the top of it and then kind of coming into this corner so it will all look nice obviously putting the books into this room we've got the massive bay window so we are losing we're still losing space but it's just better configured than um, the space that we would lose in this room. So that is one major change and decision we've made recently, but yes, lots to think about. Next up on the agenda, my friends, is a trip to the shops. Can't remember if I said this yesterday, but we are absolutely must get everything bought. You know, things like wrapping paper tape, um, things we need. For once in my life, I actually remembered tote bags. We're coming shopping and I've got tote bags. Hi my loves. So I just had a moment where I was feeling a bit overwhelmed. So I back from the shops, picked up a few presents lots of wrapping paper. Actually, I don't think we got tape. I think we got one of those. I really wanted one of those like grandma style fat ass tape dispensers, you know, the big table ones. So I think we got one of those, but we haven't got, actually got tape. <laughs> um, what else did we get? We had a quick lunch. Just picked up some things that we needed. So Christmas shopping's all, almost done for everyone apart from Zach and the baby. Um, but I think I know what I want for both, so it's just a matter of getting online and ordering. But yeah, oh my goodness, yeah, so I almost just had a little moment because I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed. So we came back, just packaged some bits up to send off at the post office, so Zach's going to take those to the post office for me, and I am going to sit and edit for a couple of hours. Um, hopefully it won't take me too, too long. And then, yeah, I really wanted to pack in the day today, but the day has truly got away with us. So it's gonna have to be packing when the baby has gone to bed, which I'm not looking forward to. My back is hurting so, so much. I actually had to um, cancel my PT, not just because we are really busy and we are going away tomorrow and everything, but also because um, my back's just so bad, like I wouldn't have been able to lift anything. I think it's just all the stuff we've been doing, um, moving stuff around. Oh, sex just got me a cup of tea. <laughs> I really, really need this cup of tea, desperately. But yeah, just moving stuff around, doing stuff. It has sitting on uncomfortable chairs to edit. That's a big one. So yeah, my back really hurts and packing exacerbates it I find all the sort of bending down sorting out sorting through being on my feet but once it's done it's done and I don't have to pack again because we're doing all the packing for the Christmas period and I will do a little pack with me later um so that'll be nice so that is that but I'm sure once this video is edited I'm gonna have a couple of hours with the baby and getting her to bed and giving her a little snuggle which I'm sure will make me feel better 
and then we'll be packing and then that'll be done and then I can breathe. <sighs> Long time no speak. I can't remember when I last spoke to you. I think it was before we headed into the shops. But as you will have seen, I came home. Oh no, it was up. It was when I was about to edit my video, which seems like a thousand years ago. <laughs> um, yes, it was a thousand years ago. So I finished my video, went down to see the baby, spent some time with her, put her to bed, ate my dinner, which we call chicken alizac. It's basically chicken in a part baked roll with mayonnaise but it's just very delicious. I can't really remember why but I think Zach made it with the turkey leftovers once after Christmas. <sighs> the stress continues I'm afraid. <laughs> um, yeah so we basically did what we shouldn't have done which is watch the MasterChef final. It was very bad of us. I actually though to be fair sat on my laptop all evening and finished my Christmas shopping full stop. Inez done, Zach done, everyone else, everyone else done. So, was it such a stupid thing to do? I don't know. That's all finished. Sorry, I'm opening this and when I edit it back I'm going to be like, why did you decide to speak over you opening a box? Because it's going to be so loud and annoying. But I've had another exciting package from Veeb, which I thought I would just share with you quickly. Um, and it's the Shimmer Eye Wands. You know, I love the Eye Wands anyway. So I am particularly excited about these as well, especially because it's Christmas. So Shimmer is the name of the game. Um, just nice to watch them for you. Probably not got time to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway. So we've got Burnt Copper. But I love these. Oh, the sticks fell out and gone into the lid. Okay, well the colour is gorgeous. Not going to look like much in this horrible lighting, but it is very beautiful. But unfortunately, it is stuck in the lid. Yeah, the colour is so nice. I maybe will wear this one tomorrow because it is very Christmassy. But wow, that lighting is so bad. Do you know what? I might not even bother swatching the rest of them because the lighting is so shocking. But I will try and show you them up maybe on the eyelid. Um, so those are coming with me. Anyway, I thought I'd just open that whilst I had a quick chat with you. I look like a mess. But yeah so we watched the MasterChef final which meant that we have started our packing very very late which is very very silly of us because we have about eight weeks of washing to put away because when we came back from the flat it took us a long time to get through all that washing and then a long time for Zach to iron it all and then we brought it all up in piles and we've been so busy that we have not managed to get around to putting it all away so we have to portion off the things we want to take with us and put the rest of it away because I do not want to leave this place in a state before I go away for Christmas um, and also I find packing for Christmas so hard I don't know what it is because it's literally like two weeks of time but it always feels like so much more I don't know and I always feel like I want everything with me that I could possibly need because I'm supposed to sort of be in a homey space and a homey mindset but I also must remember that over the Christmas period especially because I don't plan to do any work this year I don't plan to take any proper pictures or anything like that I generally just sit around in my comfies I do not get properly dressed and I always bring so many clothes that I never end up wearing so I'm trying to be wise and clever I don't know what we're going to be doing up north probably nothing crazy either so I just need to not overpack but it is just so hard <laughs> and then of course we've got all our vlogging stuff and just so much stuff I can't even begin so trying to sort through all of that is somewhat stressful also the baby keeps waking up so um and she seems a lot more when she wakes up at the minute she seems a lot more like wakeful when when i go in to settle her like she's taking a bit longer to settle 
Um, she doesn't necessarily just drop straight back off after a feed, so I um, don't know what that's about. Don't know if it's an age thing. Will it continue? Is it a phase? Who knows? But um, yeah, it's obviously not ideal. Um, I usually don't mind too much. As I've said before, I try and go with the flow with her wake ups and not like bother too much with them and like not let them get to me or anything like that. But when you do have something to do and you really need to just set your mind to it and do it. It is frustrating when you have to keep going and resettling the baby. But anyway, I said I would do a little pack my books with me um, portion of this video yesterday. So that is exactly what we're going to do. But I need to change my camera battery first. Okay, I'm back with fresh battery. But let me pick my books. I was going to pick my books before I turned the camera on. But I've got. Let me pick my books. So let's talk books. I think you're going to think these choices are a little strange, but I will explain them. One thing though, I just love a big book at the moment. I just can't get enough of big books this year. I think it's part of the reason why I just have not hit my reading goal at all this year, because I just keep reading these massive books and I've got less time for reading, not more. Uh, I did try not to pick the thousand plus pages books for this two week uh, time period, but I have got some big books here. <laughs> anyway, I'm obviously taking my current reads, so um, I want to finish Gormenghast. I want to finish both books. I was making l really good progress um, in like November, but yes, with everything ramping up work wise, I have not managed to get to it again, but I would really like to finish it. I have got this much left, so you know, I'm over halfway. And then I did start this because I wanted to get in the bath and read, I don't know when. Oh, it was when I had my really short bath. <laughs> and um, I was not about to drag Gormenghast into the bath with me because he's way too heavy. I picked up The Strange Bird by Jeff Annemir, which is um, a little novella or st story um, in the Bourne universe. Other books that I'm taking, so those two are coming with me up north in the hopes that maybe I'll actually get some reading time. Um, but these are the ones that are going to go to the farm. There's a theme here because I read St. Tony Morrison, I read Song of Solomon over the Christmas period um, a couple years ago, two, three years ago, I have no idea. And so there's something about Tony Morrison that now reminds me of that period. Um, and I have not read Paradise. Four young women are brutally attacked in a convent near an all-black town in rural Oklahoma in the mid-1970s. The inevitability of this attack and the attempts to avert it lie at the heart of Paradise. Spanning the birth of the civil, civil rights movement, Vietnam, the counterculture and politics of the late 1970s, deftly manipulating past, present and future, this novel reveals the interior lives of the citizens of the town with astonishing clarity. Next up, I thought it wouldn't be Christmas if I didn't take a fantasy or sci-fi speculative fiction of some description. So we've got Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I bought this earlier this year and I have not managed to get around to it. Oh, the smell of books, I've missed it. So we're taking this one. Here's the theme because I also read <laughs> some Murakami two or three Christmases ago two Christmases in a row, I think. And so again, Murakami's writing sort of reminds me of that time period. Um, so I've got IQ84, books one and two. I have also got book three on my shelf, but I'm not expecting to do a whole trilogy anytime soon. Um, so yes, I've actually been wanting to read this for a long time. I do really like um, Murakami. Um, then I've got Austerlitz. I imagine this is going to be a bit of a harrowing read, um, but it keeps popping out at me on my shelves and I would really like to read it. I think I bought this a couple years ago now, um, January a couple years ago, can you believe that was two years ago, when I finished my book buying ban? Scary. But um, yes, in 1939, do you know, I haven't even read you the blurbs of these, let me read you <laughs> the blurb of Children of Time. The last remnants of the human race left a dying earth, desperate to find a new home. Following their ancestors' star maps, they discovered the greatest treasure of a past age, a world terraformed and prepared for human life. But all is not right in this new Eden. The planet is not waiting for them, pristine and unoccupied. 
New masters have turned it from a refuge into mankind's worst nightmare. Now two civilizations are on a collision course and must fight to survive. Who are the heirs of this new earth? Here is IQ84. This is the real world, there is no doubt about that. But in this world there are two moons in the sky. In this world the fates of two people, Tengo and Aomame, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, are closely intertwined. They are each in their own way doing something very dangerous and in this world there seems no way to save them both. Something extraordinary is starting. Sounds very intriguing. And Astolitz. I believe Astolitz is um, a memoir. Uh, combining fiction, memoir, travelogue, philosophy and much else besides. So I think it's one of those genre bending pieces of writing. I'll read to the blurb. In 1939, five-year-old Jack Jacques Austerlitz is sent to England on a kinder tra transport and placed with foster parents. This childless couple promptly erase from the boy all knowledge of his identity and he grows up ignorant of his past. Later in life, after a career as an architectural historian, Austerlitz, having avoided all clues that might point to his origin, finds the past returning to haunt him and he's forced to explore what happened 50 years before. And final book in my theme, um, because again, I read some Alice Munro, I think this time last year. So I'm taking another Alice Munro collection with me. I actually didn't love the collection that I read Christmas last year. Hopefully this will be a bit more of a success. This is The Beggar Maid, which I think follows a couple of characters. Um, so she is a short story writer, but I guess this is maybe as close to a novel as you would get with Alice Munro. Um, back into the back streets of a small Canadian town, Rose battled incessantly with her practical and shrewd stepmother. Flo, who cowed her with tales of her own past and warnings of the dangerous world outside. But Rose was ambitious. She won a scholarship and left for Toronto where she married Patrick. She was his beggar maid, meek and voluptuous with her shy white feet, and he was her knight, content to sit and adore her. Alice Munro's wonderful collection of stories reads like a novel following Rose's life as she moves away from her impoverished roots and forges her own path in the world. So there we go. And that is the smallest book I'm doing with me. Um, apart from The Strange Bird, of course. But that is all the books I'm taking. I'm going to get back to work and start packing some stuff. I think Zach is diligently sorting out all the washing. So I best go and assist and start deciding which bits I want to take. was it has kept waking up um, uh, I think she was just uncomfortable or something something was not right and she wanted to be with us um, she was like oh this is when I usually come into your bed why do you keep trying to put me back in my cot so I gave up and <laughs> lay with her um, in her room and I said to Zach do your packing and I'll bring her up um, when you're ready and she can be in bed with you whilst I do my packing so he does his packing, of course I fall asleep. He did text me to say I'm ready, but then he only called me half an hour later so he must have discovered something else to do. Not sure. But anyway, so he called me so I woke up. So I did get a little nap in of about 45 minutes. <laughs> and then I came up, um, put in, his, in bed with him and 
gotten with my packing. This was 2am and I had done no packing yet. Anyway, I had packed literally everything and the good thing about having her out of her room whilst I finished the packing is that I could get literally everything including all of like her baby monitor and all that kind of stuff so it worked out but of course literally I was just taking my makeup off um, and I was taking my skin makeup off, hadn't reached the eyeballs yet and um, she woke up and she was distressed that I was not there. She sounded so sad, so I did not end up taking my mascara off um, and I have been rubbing my eyes repeatedly because I'm tired. <laughs> so yes, it was the wee hours, okay? Um, yeah, it was late or early. So I'm feeling, I'm actually feeling okay, but, but I know it will hit me the minute I'm in the car probably and I'll have to edit my video and I'll just want to have a nap but I feel I should do it the other way around I should edit my video and then have a nap um, but yeah I'm going to utilise my car time again today and get some editing done anyway my loves let me finish off this vlog thank you so much for watching today I will see you tomorrow for all of that fun bye